Dr. Howell Moody was a Jamaican doctor, uh, born in Kingston, Jamaica in 1882. He came to London to study medicine and to train as a doctor in the Edwardian era and qualified just before the First World War, set up a practice in Peckham in South East London and eventually moved to a big house on Queen's Road, Peckham, where he lived with his wife and children and had his doctor's practice. He was a very popular GP in the local area. He would take care of anyone that came to him. He, he didn't turn anyone away. And this was in the days long before we had the National Health Service and people had to pay their doctors for treatment. So Dr Moody was a very popular GP in the local area of, of Peckham before he became a very important leader for the black community in Britain. I don't think Dr Moody experienced much racist attitudes when he came here. There, there would have been some people who thought he was an oddity or an exotic because they were not used to seeing black people on the streets of London in the Edwardian era uh, before the First World War. Uh, he would have encountered some discrimination in looking for lodgings. But I think, by and large, because he worked in the medical profession and was training as a doctor, he was moving amongst people that would have had some exposure to black people anyway in, in universities, uh, in, in medicine, um, because he was by no means the only black doctor in England at that time, or medical student, I should say. So I think, by and large, he would have been accepted and treated with respect, with few, few exceptions. By the 1930s, Dr. Howard Moody was established in this country as someone any black person could go to, whether they lived in Cardiff or Liverpool or Land's End to John O'Groats. Dr. Moody's name was known in the black communities around the country as someone who would help them with if they encountered discrimination in housing or, or in jobs. Uh, and so in 1931, he tried to formalise this by establishing one of the first organisations to protect the interests of black people in Britain, which, was the, which he called the League of Coloured Peoples. And that was based in his home in Queen's Road, Peckham, in, in, and established in 1931. He attracted the attention of famous people like Paul Robeson, who, who lent him support. Um, many black leaders who came to this country visited him. And his home became a kind of focus and centre point for black visitors to this country. But he was also helping the ordinary working class black folk. So that many years later, uh, 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 an academic described him as Britain's Mar Dr Martin Luther King. Because of his leadership of the black community in this country, his campaigning of the government um, and, and the colonial office to improve the situation for black people, and certainly during the war. We needed him during the war because during the Second World War, from 1939 to 45, there was a lot happening in the country that, that, that needed a black voice that was respected. After the war, in 1947, Dr Moody died. He died when he was just in his 60s. He literally burned himself out. He died in 1947. His funeral at the Campbell Green Congregational Church was attended by thousands. But Britain is not very good at paying respect to its black historical figures, and sadly like so many others, Dr Moody has been forgotten and lost in time 
He should be on the school curriculum. I don't see why we should have Dr Martin Luther King on, on the British school curriculum and not Dr Howard Boody. I think that's disgraceful. What spurred my interest in Dr Howard Moody was just really how important he was in terms of black history in Britain and how overlooked and forgotten he was. It, it, was, it, was, it is a disgrace that he's not in the school, school curriculum and it's a disgrace that young people are not taught about him. So what I did in the London Borough of Southwark, which is where I live, I approached my local authority, Southwark Council, about maybe doing a small book for young people, uh, for primary school age and teenagers, about Dr Howard Moody. And they did come up with the funding. This was in 2008. It took a long while to get the funding together because, uh, you know, cash-strapped cash times. But finally we, you know, we got the book out, and I was very proud to be the person who put it together and wrote it. But what was nice about this book was that it, it was distributed free. 2,000 copies were distributed free to primary schools around London Borough of Southwark to help, and also given free to public libraries in Southwark to raise the profile of Dr Moody. I'm very proud of that achievement. And one of the outcomes of this was, was, was really exciting for me, was at the Peckham Shed, uh, youth theatre group. There's a group of black lads at the Peckham Shed Theatre found the book or was given the book and they made a short play. They devised it, scripted it and acted it and took it around to some of the schools and local community centres and I was asked to attend some of the performances including one at my former primary school on Peckham Road, the Oliver Goldsmith Primary School which was fantastic because I hadn't set foot inside that school since I'd left in 1969. And this was 2008, nearly 40 years later. And I go back to my old primary school and stand up in front of the children and introduce this, this play and talked a little bit about Dr Moody. And that was really heartwarming for me to be able to do something like that. The reaction to everything I've done with Dr Howard Moody has been very positive, albeit on a very small scale. Uh, it would have been nice if the book could have been distributed more widely, but because of limited costs we couldn't do that. I mean, every school in England, in Britain, should have this book. That isn't possible, but, but young people, hopefully through, through the work that I've done, can get to know a little bit more about him. I think Dr Howard Moody's greatest legacy is that he was an, an inspiring black leader, community leader, at a time when black people in this country, before the war, before the Second World War, really needed someone to represent their point of view, to support them in their hour of need, and particularly during the war. His legacy during the war should not be forgotten. He, he did so much to help raise the profile of black people in Britain at that time and what they were doing for the British war effort. Very important that that's not forgotten. There are a number of permanent reminders of Dr Howard Moody, um, thankfully, in, in the local area. One of the stories that I want to tell you about is something very close to my heart. I discovered that his brother, this is his brother Ronald, um, who was obviously of, or also born in Jamaica, but Ronald was a very famous sculptor um, back in the 1930s and 40s and 50s. did some beautiful work and he made this bronze head of Dr Howard Moody. Uh, back in the 1940s and there was a copy and the copy went to the National Portrait Gallery. The original was dis bought for and by public subscription and displayed um, somewhere in London, I can't remember where, and it disappeared. It vanished. It was stolen in the 1960s and disappeared for many, many years.
Now, a few years ago, when I was working on the book, I found out that it was up for auction in New Zealand. Don't ask me how it got to New Zealand, but it did. So I went to Southwark Council and I said, look, this is really important that we bring this back to Peckham. It was paid for by public subscription. His brother sculpted the bronze head. And to their credit, Southwark Council bid for it. And it wasn't as expensive as they thought it would be. And they managed to find the money in, in the art collection part of Southwark Council. And we brought it back to England. And, it's, and I was listened to and taken seriously and I said I don't want it stuck in a cupboard in, in the back of a you know office somewhere or I said I want it on public display where people can see it. So it's now on public display in Peckham Library, everyone can see it, with a panel nearby which gives you some background information on Dr. Howard Moody. And I'm really proud of that because it's close to Queen's Road where he lived and founded his organisation, the League of Colour Peoples. And so it's in the local area where he is best associated with, and it's it's a very important acquisition that we've now got back in the country, thanks to me. <laughs>